23 years ago, when I was but a wee summer child, I enjoyed seeing Lord of the Rings with my friends and family. I noticed something about the movie. It was one of the best movies I've ever seen. I loved the sets, and I wanted to live in Bag End. Aragorn was compassionate and a rough hero, and Legolas was stealthy and cocky. And Gimli, man, fuck Gimli. It's personal. Just leave it at that. Anyway, I loved Gandalf. He was a smoked out wizard who arrived late to parties and took on ball rods. I wanted to be him. However, when I kept seeing the hobbits, I noticed they were different. Not only in their looks, but the way they cared for one another and their chemistry towards one another. My friends and I were into basketball, girls, and video games. Similarly, all things quote unquote manly. When Samwise excitedly displayed his longing to be by Frodo's side, I remember my friends laughing out loud and snickering when Frodo was doing his eyes thing in return. I remember my friends laughing so much that I joined in. I always felt uncomfortable and I could not explain why. From this moment, I made a point that whenever Lord of the Rings The Fellowship came on, I would skip it and start with The Two Towers and finish with The Return of the King. Those films seem more manly. There were more battles and less tender moments. Fast forward to now, I recently saw The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship, and I was confused about what had changed in me from then to now. I was older, and not too much wiser. But I had a new appreciation for the characters in the film. I had seen 23 years ago. A film I tried to avoid up until now. In this video, I want to highlight my thoughts on the characters and why I have a new fondness and appreciation for Fellowship of the Ring. Let's talk about it. Insecurities and homophobia. It's difficult to discuss how my feelings for the Fellowship of the Ring have changed since 2001 without addressing my past. I always thought of myself as a good person. You know, you do right by me, I do right by you. However, I realized I had biases towards certain things and people when I was younger. It was not that I hated people who identified as LGBTQ. It was that I did not have a lot of references to draw from, positive references to draw from, mind you. What I did have were stereotypes, cobbled together through media, through family and friends who discussed they had seen or known someone who was one of them. Male tenderness was not something I experienced much in my life. I have a dad who loved me and did the best to raise me but there was always a distance between us. I felt I had to be more of a man to him. You know, run track like he did, do martial arts, have girlfriends, make sure they're pretty girlfriends. I received kisses and hugs from him when I was younger, but as I grew older, those displays of affection grew few and far between. I accepted it as that that's what men do. We don't coddle or kiss one another. We man up. We move on, move forward. And so my young adult life, my affection toward other men, those who were friends of mine, was always at a distance. We may shoot the shit and roughhouse, but any moment of vulnerability was dashed by the derogatory, oh, that's gay, man. We would say it so often, even things that had nothing to do with being gay. I remember when I had long hair and I was taking out my braids after a basketball game. My friend said to me, why do you have to always do that gay shit all the time? I looked at him like, what the hell is he talking about? He immediately told me, you always playing with your hair and shit. That's some gay shit. I'm using gay instead of the other derogatory term we would usually say to one another, out of respect. His words stuck to me, and I told her to cancel the appointment. I was ashamed when I should not have been, and to this day, it still hurts a little that I gave into my friend's biased opinion. The point I'm trying to make is that I grew up with biases, some instilled intentionally in me, others unintentionally. So when I saw a character on screen, 
who displayed levels of tenderness I had never seen. It was like visiting a foreign planet or meeting a being from another world. I was curious about them, but I was also scared of them at the same time. Also, the very act of conflating tenderness to a negative connotation of a chosen lifestyle preference was something I had to relearn in my adult years. I was so full of shit when I was younger, and this stunted my growth in experiencing relationships and trusting myself around other people. But this is a topic for another day. What I do remember so vividly when looking at The Lord of the Rings and The Fellowship were the characters who challenged my insecurities and biases of what it means to be a man, a hero, and to be tender with one another. Let's start off with one of my favorite characters, Aragorn, the compassionate, rugged strider. When I first saw Aragorn, I wanted to be him. He was a strider. I love the video game strider, and I like that Aragorn wore a hood and had an awesome sword. Viggo Mortensen is a great actor, and I discovered how much of himself he gave to the role of Aragorn as I got older. Viggo broke a toe. He lost a tooth. He's often considered being the best swordsman in the entire film. Aragorn was and is the shit, and I even love the fact that he has elven blood. In the books, Aragorn is a character who is destined to be the king of men. He has been running away from that responsibility. He feels in some way he's not good enough, not worthy. However, everyone from Frodo to Arwen, from Legolas to Gandalf, look towards Aragorn as a leader and a good man. I'm an introvert by nature. I don't like to be the star of the show or seek out drama. Hell, even starting conversations can be exhausting. However, I saw all the great qualities I wanted to be as a man in Aragorn. Qualities such as Aragorn was soft-spoken but his words carried weight when he spoke. Aragorn was a skilled fighter and always appeared to have incredible stamina when in battle. Aragorn is fearless, despite the odds placed against him. I looked at the fellowship and the character Aragorn, and I believe that you can be a man that shows tenderness and still be a badass. But what are some of the qualities and examples which Aragorn shows his tenderness in the film? Well, for starters, when Frodo offers Aragorn the ring towards the end of the fellowship, Aragorn is tempted for just a millisecond. He then kneels in front of Frodo, softly closes Frodo's hands, and says, I would have gone to the very depths of Mordor for you. He knows that he is not strong enough to bear the power of the ring, and understands that Frodo must be the one to do it. Another example is when Aragorn is reading alone in a sanctuary in Rivendell. He quietly witnesses Boromir gaze upon a legendary blade in Shards of Narsil. When Boromir witnesses Aragorn, he drops the blade so callously. Aragorn gets up and instead of yelling at Boromir, walks up to the dropped blade and gently picks it up with reverence. In this moment, he shows respect to his ancestors and demonstrates the restraint and grace of a king. The last example that strikes me of Aragorn's tenderness is when Boromir battles with Frodo over the ring. This is towards the end of the film. A band of Urukai tracks and swarms a fellowship in the woods. Boromir valiantly tries to protect Merry and Pippin, but is unsuccessful. The leader of the band of Urukai shoots and shoots several insanely large arrows into Boromir. As Boromir lies dying, Aragorn comes to rescue and realizes Merry and Pippin have been taken and sees Boromir on the brink of death. It's at this moment that Boromir finally acknowledges Aragorn as the king of Gondor and kinsmen, as his final last words. When Boromir dies, Aragorn gently and sweetly kisses Boromir's forehead. This act of respect is tragic and shows Aragorn's empathy and nature in giving honor to those who felt honorless. Samwise Gamgee. While I was always, while I always wanted to be Aragorn, in reality, I was more like Samwise. Someone who was stout of heart, but earnest, who yearned to talk and meet with girls, but was too shy to approach them. Someone who was a hard worker, but feared stepping out of their comfort zone. Samwise was brilliantly played by one of my favorite Goonies, the timeless Sean Astin. I believe in Samwise because Sean Astin plays the role with so much heart and believability. How does Samwise show his tenderness in the film? 
whenever, wherever Frodo is, Samwise is not far behind. This proves not only Sam's loyalty, but how he values friendship with Frodo. Frodo and Sam have a beer at the beginning of the film. Sam is listening to Gandalf and Frodo discuss the impending doom to befall their village if the Ring of Power remains in the Shire. Sam is the first hobbit besides Frodo, Merry, and Pippin to take up the task and help Frodo carry the Ring to Mordor. And Sam usually is the one cooking and preparing camp for the Fellowship. Another example is when Frodo quietly takes a boat at the end of the film and sails down the river, separately from the Fellowship. Sam yells at Frodo to wait for him, knowing damn well he can't swim. Decides to jump into the water after Frodo. As Sam is on the brink of drowning, he is saved by Frodo. And the next words that come out of Sam's mouth tell you everything about the type of person he is. Don't you leave him, Samwise Gamgee. And I don't mean to. Frodo Baggins. The Fellowship, and to a greater extent the Lord of the Rings, would not work without the courage and heart of Frodo. Someone so small, given a task, not even a high elf or all-powerful wizard could accomplish the power to withstand the ring. I can honestly say I could not picture another actor playing the role of Frodo than Elijah Wood. Elijah has always been a powerhouse of an actor since he was young. To this day, watching Radio Flyer is tough for me. However, Elijah captures the sense of longing for adventure, to be someone more than the relative of the great Bilbo Baggins. One of the hardest methods in acting is to capture a range of emotions with just a look. Without words, you can tell so much, so much depth of emotion can be laid bare. There are only a few actors in the world that I feel that can do this. Actors such as Denzel, Timothy, Zendaya, Leonardo, Charlize, and Daniel. I can go on and on, but Frodo, and to a greater extent, Elijah Wood, were the reasons when I was young, I could not focus on the film. It was a simple fact because Elijah was able to communicate so much emotion with his eyes. It made me uncomfortable. It was beautiful and haunting. And I was not ready or mature enough to deal with why I felt the way I did. What are some examples of Frodo's tenderness in the film? The simple act of Frodo being the only one to take on the mantle of carrying the ring of power out of the Shire in the first place. You know, he did not have to do this. In fact, he did this without knowing how much danger and how much of a toll this would take on his life. Another great example that I feel is when Gandalf sacrifices himself in the minds of Moria and tells Frodo and the others in the Fellowship, Fly, you fools. The scream Frodo t lets out when Gandalf falls into the abyss is heartbreaking. Frodo is so broken that he seems to attempt to walk off the mountain by himself. When Aragorn screams his name, Frodo turns toward Aragorn and the look of sorrow he gives is equally heartbreaking. There are so many more examples from all three characters in the Fellowship, and even more as the entire trilogy goes on. I wanted to discuss just these three characters and brief examples that I found most noteworthy. In short, coming to grips with your insecurities or having a movie make you face those insecurities is a sobering experience. As a man, you're constantly told to hold it in, man up, don't cry. But I feel not connecting with your emotions and not being able to display them to those you love and care about, honestly, is deadly. I'm at a stage in my life where I don't really give a fuck about what others think about me. The older I get, it seems, the more emotional I become. For a long time, I actually thought I was weak. But this has opened me up to so many experiences. I'm more open and mature enough to see stories, share stories, and be present in a way that would scare away my younger self. Thank you, Peter Jackson. Thank you, Fran Walsh. And thank you most of all to J.R.R. Tolkien for teaching me how to be a better man. Even in a world full of darkness, it means so much more to embrace and show the smallest of lights in others as well as in yourself. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And have a good day. Gabs out.